Morning everyone, hope you're well. Thanks for joining me again. Uh, yeah, been a bit busy lately. I've uh, struggled to put time aside to produce content for this channel. As you can imagine, the Lake District is pretty overrun with tourists at the moment, which from my point of view is a good thing because uh, you know running a gallery on a high street means I'm getting plenty of footfall and Prince Earls are, are doing well. Downside to that is there's a lot of idiots trashing the place. So I do wish some people would exercise a little bit of common sense when they come here, but that's another argument altogether. On to today's video, uh, I wanted to do a little bit more about the sort of commercial aspect of running a gallery alongside my landscape photography. I did touch on this earlier in a, a video up at Deverquarter about uh, sort of going into discussing some of these aspects. Uh, so I thought, why not get out into the landscape? I'm down at Waswater again this morning because, uh, you know, this sort of talky video I'd, I'd rather do outside rather than behind a desk, to be honest. But I'm going to talk to you this morning about selling prints. Uh, selling prints is something that I think applies to, you know, all landscape photographers at all levels, really, because, you know, ultimately, I think we all want to produce work that, you know, people like and enjoy. And, you know, hopefully at some point, you know, someone might buy one and put it on the wall. So, yeah, I think uh, I think it will be an interesting discussion topic today. Um, I'm going to sort of move around a little bit and see if I can get a few different shots here while I'm out because, you know, it's uh, never time wasted and, you know, I can have a little bit of a recce about as well. But it's not going to be an exhaustive list, this video. I don't, you know, I don't want to sort of, you know, it's not going to be a five. Well, I think I have actually got five points, but five things to do this. And, you know, this isn't going to be about that. It's going to be more about the factors involved in selling prints and you know things that you can maybe take into consideration when you you know applying it to your own landscape photography and, and whether you want to sell prints or not but uh, anyway i'm rambling on a bit i'm going to move a bit further down the lake and uh, i'll catch up with you in a bit All right, so I've come a little further down the lake just to this nice sort of secluded little area. Um, I don't come here for anything sinister, don't worry. <laughs> it's a nice little area when the water levels are a bit higher. There's a, there's a shot I just showed you earlier there leading off into the, into the distance with the fence. It's a little bit twee, to be honest, but uh, it's a nice little shot when the water levels are right and the water levels are a bit higher at the moment. So, you know, I thought I'd grab a quick one while I was here. But anyway, without further ado, what we're here to discuss, which is selling prints. Now, the first thing I'm going to start with is a bit of an odd one, really. And you'll probably think, well, why is he saying this? But, you know, hopefully I'll try and explain this well enough. So the first thing is it's not always about quality. Now, you'll probably think that's going to be a bit of an odd sort of statement to make really but here's why as landscape photographers we always want to produce work of the highest standard we can you know that's that's a given really you know you just want to do that for your own personal pride and your own personal growth etc etc but when it comes to selling prints what you've got to be aware of is that a lot of the time you know a lot of the people who follow your work aren't really interested in the same things that you are in photography you know you'll spend an awful lot of time composing your images and you know tastefully processing them to match the mood of the scene you know all that time and investment that you put into those images a lot of that will sail over a lot of people's heads you know for the casual viewer who looks at these images on instagram or facebook a lot of them aren't photographers they've just got you know a passing interest in the outdoors and yeah a lot of that a lot of the sort of technical nuances and stuff will just completely pass them by now that's totally understandable because you know why would you expect them to to know these things they're not invested in photography but if you're sitting there thinking you know why is this great image of mine not getting enough attention and you know why is it not selling any prints you know there's there's probably a good chance it's nothing to do with the quality of the work that you're producing it's just more a case that you know it perhaps hasn't reached the right audience or you know possibly doesn't have that sort of instant wow factor that you get on you know instagram and other social media where 
you know, you'll see all these images with overprocessing and, you know, really high saturation. And, you know, that's a byproduct of the fact that, you know, in today's society, everything's instant. You know, we look at a lot of imagery on very small screens. So, you know, it does drive a lot of photographers towards trying to produce images that, you know, really instantly eye-catching at a small size. So your nice sort of subtle considered image, which might look great in a print and great on a big sort of calibrated monitor, you know, might not go over so well. So just something to consider. All right, the next one on the list is something that I think is completely overlooked when I hear people in tips videos and blogs giving advice about selling prints. And that's the physical product. Now, what I mean by that is that the feedback I get from customers on a daily basis coming through the gallery is that there's no substitute for being able to physically see that product up close, you know, appreciate the tactile nature of the frame, uh, you know, the different lighting conditions, because that plays a part in, you know, how people present, you know, framed artwork in their homes. You know, I mean, that's easy for me to say, running a gallery, I've got a, you know, a nice, you know, shop here to display the work, but for you, <laughs> considering selling your prints it's just something to think about because if you think in your own life you know when you buy everyday products like you know a tv or a sofa or you know a set of curtains there's a good chance that you're going to want to see that product before you buy it i mean that's just common sense i mean i do it myself um smaller purchases i'm you know less fussed about seeing it up close but certainly if i'm parting with hundreds of pounds which is what you'll probably want for you know a, a big a1 size frame print for example uh you know it's it's something not to be underestimated now i think there is something that most people can do to sort of mitigate this a little bit and that is where possible if you're seriously thinking about selling your work uh through your website or whatever if you can get a decent product shot of your framed print sort of in situ on a wall in some decent lighting, I mean, most people should be able to do this even with, you know, fairly basic lighting setups or even sort of natural window light. But it just gives the customer a little bit of a, a sort of better idea of how it's going to look on their wall. And it also shows that you're, you're you know, really serious about what you're doing and you know you're invested in the presentation of that work itself so yeah just something that you might have overlooked right i'm gonna have to get through these because uh, my battery life on this uh this 6400 isn't so good it's uh, pretty low at the minute anyway next on the list is aesthetic considerations now what i mean by that is that a lot of people will buy you know artwork purely on the basis of it matching, you know, the colour of the walls, the sofa, uh, the ambience of the room, the sort of general decor of the house. They've no real interest in the photography itself. They've no interest in your story about how you took it, etc., etc. Um, they've no attachment to the location itself. Uh, they just purely want something that, you know, is visually appealing and matches the, the colour scheme often. So, you know, it, You've got to be prepared for the fact that people will, you know, buy stuff of yours and, you know, there's no interest in the photography behind it itself at all. The other thing as well, which is uh, maybe a bit of a surprise to you, is that the vast majority of sales I make, uh, the images tend to be sort of bright, warm images. And that's purely because a lot of people don't want cold images in their houses because it makes the house feel cold. Um, which is a bit of a disappointment for a lot of landscape photographers because, you know, we love shooting those nice sort of wintry scenes with snow and ice and all that. It makes for really interesting subjects. But for the casual buyer, uh, a lot of the time they don't want that stuff in the houses. So it's why if you ever come in my gallery, the vast majority of the stuff you see on the walls is sort of uh, brighter, warmer images. Uh, it might not necessarily be to my taste sometimes, but at the end of the day, when you're trying to make a living from this and you're trying to sell prints, you've got to make uh, decisions more on a commercial basis than, you know, with your ego, if you like. Mm -hmm. 
Right, next on the list, this is a bit of a dull one, but nonetheless important, and that's aspect ratios. Uh, again, you know, going back to my sort of day-to-day -day work in the gallery, the overwhelming majority of sales, I would say between 70, 75% of my sales tend to be panoramic images. Now, this is something that before I got into running that gallery, I really didn't shoot many panoramic images at all. They were often a bit of an afterthought, to be honest, and uh, I tended to shy away from the little a little bit because, uh, you know, shooting good panoramic images that are well considered is no easy thing. You know, it, it, I see a lot of photographers just sort of standing there, you know, shooting 15 frame stitch panoramas and not giving any consideration to the sort of composition in in general and just shooting the big massive wide vista but when it comes to actually selling prints again this is something that uh you know for the casual buyer then they're, they're not massively interested in that so now when i'm out in the field and i think i mentioned this in an earlier vlog is that i'll always try and get uh, a panoramic image if it suits the scene just as a sort of extra if you like to have him having my sort of sales catalogue because really people want images that that fill walls and the easiest way to do that is with panoramic images you know standard formats like three by two or four by three five by four you know for the photographer they often will suit the scene better but from a commercial point of view uh, they don't really sell at all and even less so which is really more dis um, disappointing for me because I like to shoot in portrait format is is those vertical images you know from a buyer's perspective they don't fill a wall you know that I'll often hear people talking about oh well we could get that portrait image to sort of hang on the stairs if you like or something like that and they always seem to be a bit of an afterthought so you know just something to consider that you know if you're trying to sell print seriously you know don't change the way you shoot i'm not advocating people you know go out there and suddenly start shooting everything in panoramic and you know don't shoot any portraits but it's just worth considering at the back of your mind that uh, you know if you can shoot those different aspect ratios while you're out in the field to cover yourself it's always a good idea Right, hopefully I haven't bored you too much and, uh, you know, you've stuck to the end of this video and you found it interesting. Hopefully it's, uh, you know, been a bit of an eye-opener for some of you. The last thing that I want to talk about, which is a little bit of a sort of controversial topic, if you like, but it's, it's true nonetheless because I see it every day. And that is the public perception and value of landscape photography. Now, what I mean by that is that really it's a bit of an uncomfortable truth for photographers but the reality is that most people who aren't invested in photography have a pretty low opinion of it especially landscapes people do have this perception that you know you just walk out into the landscape and take a pretty picture and that's the extent of it which is a real shame because you know we as photographers like to think that we're producing work that is you know both skillful and and has merit uh, but the reality is that to the wider public it is classed as the sort of second class citizen to, in comparison with sort of painting and, and sketching etc i mean i know because you know with having this gallery in a, in a popular tourist town there's many other galleries in the town and my work is is compared against that which i've no problem with you know i've got thick skin i can i can live with it uh, but i do see a lot of people coming in the gallery and uh, even kids at a young age you know they're brought up to believe this make sort of passing comments to the effect of you know these are just prints or these aren't paintings and you know which is which is a real shame but for you as someone out there who's thinking about selling prints it's you know something that you do have to consider you know people generally don't have that high an opinion of photography um, that's just the way of the world i mean how i price my prints in the gallery i think is pretty reasonable if anything it's, they're a little on the low side for me considering the sort of production costs that are involved but when people come in they do actually sometimes think they're expensive which is a you know a real shame but uh you know that's that's just it uh, one of the big things i think that affects this is mobile phones now you know mobile phones have been great for us you know in 
well, they have a lot of negatives, obviously, as well. But, you know, they make our lives easier and the cameras on them these days have, have gotten really good. You know, you can get really good results out of mobile phones, um, you know, in the right hands. But when people come to the Lake District and they see the landscape and they click away with the mobile phones and take a nice pretty picture, you know, that's what they're judging against. So when they come in the gallery, they think, oh, well, I can do this. I've got a picture like this on my phone. You know, why should I pay hundreds of pounds for a, a print? You know, I can do this. It's, it's no problem. Which, of course, we know is, 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 is not right. You know, there's a lot more to it than just snapping away because if it was, no, none of us would be making a living from it. But it's just something that you've, you've kind of got to be prepared for and, and deal with, really. Um, it's certainly not something that I worry about. You know, if someone comes in, I'm not going to spend 10, 15 minutes explaining to them the photographic process or this, that and the other. You know, if they like the stuff, they like it. And if they don't, they don't. You know, that's, that's just the way of the world. But it's something that I don't hear talked about an awful lot, but it is, it is reality. You know, I see it every day so many people um making those comments and a lot of the time they don't you know they don't realize you know they don't think there's they certainly don't think they're being rude or ignorant um it's just it's just how it is but uh, there you go i thought that might what well, that one might be a bit interesting for you anyway uh, as i said at the start of this video though this definitely isn't um you know sort of tips how to do this how to do that video i certainly don't want people going away from this and all of a sudden shooting everything in panoramic format and not shooting verticals and, and all that, you know. All this video is trying to achieve is just to give you a little bit of an insight into more how the general public view photography and some of their decisions and influences when, you know, they come to buying prints and then hopefully, uh, you know, you as the photographer can, you know, can make some of those considerations in your own work and, you know maybe make a few tweaks as to how you sell your own prints but hopefully you found this interesting the next video i'll be back up the fells tomorrow i've got a clear day i've got no workshops i'm off work so i'm going to get back up into the mountains and uh, hopefully get some good stuff but yeah thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one